early reviews have not been great, but we're not going to pay attention to those because I'm going to think for myself. I have an update for you. I have finished Midnight on Beacon Street, and this is a new favorite list book. What's up, everybody? My name is Zach, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you episode four of what did I just read of season two? Now you might be thinking, Zach, why are you outside? This isn't a hiking channel. Aren't I watching booktube? You would be correct. You are watching booktube and the only hiking we're going to do is hiking back inside to start reading this book because I'm excited for it. The reason I'm outside, if you guys have watched any of my vlogs before, then you know sometimes I vlog outside because I have dogs and I take them outside. And right now I have family in town and we have a very small house and I can't really vlog like in the places that I normally do right now. And so we're outside. Yay, fresh air. Okay, but really what we need to do is start the vlog because I'm very, very excited for this episode of What the Bleep. So excited that I literally cannot wait for my family to leave town to start the vlog. So to recap season two of What the Bleep, so far I have read The Reformatory, loved it, gave it five stars. I've read My Darling Girl, did not like it, really disliked that book, um, gave it one star, which is really rare for me. Um, and the playlist for all these will also be linked in the description if you would like to watch them. And then episode three was The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, and I loved it, gave it five stars. It surprised me. I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. For more information on all those books, the playlist will be linked um, in the description, like I said. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna read you guys the synopsis like I usually do starting out. I really hope that in editing, the wind is not too loud, but yeah, I guess we're gonna find out. Editing me, we'll find out, but okay. So this one is called Midnight on Beacon Street. It was voted on by the Mostly Ghostly crew, so more of them wanted to me to do this one than some of the other books so i'm really excited for it now i'm gonna read you guys the synopsis on goodreads really quick before my hands freeze off so i can go back in and get warm and snuggly and start reading the book but it says a suspenseful and entertaining debut thriller and love letter to vintage horror movies that is enough for me to auto buy want to read this book in which a teenager must overcome her own anxiety to protect the two children she's babysitting when strangers come knocking at the door october 1993 i'm getting halloween vibes like michael myers halloween vibes and also some scream vibes but let's be honest i get scream vibes for like everything um one night one house one dead body when single mom eleanor goes out for a much needed date night she leaves her two young children sweet innocent six-year-old ben and precocious defiant 12 year old myra in the capable hands of their sitter amy the quiet 17 year old is good at looking after children despite her anxiety disorder she also loves movies especially horror flicks amy likes their predictability it calms the panic that threatens to overwhelm her the evening starts out normally enough with games pizza and dancing but as darkness falls, events in the quiet sub suburban New Jersey house take a terrifying turn. Unexpected visitors at the door, mysterious phone calls, and by midnight, little Ben is in the kitchen standing in a pool of blood with a dead body at his feet. What the... <laughs> In this dazzling debate debut novel, Emily goes back and forth in time, raking up suspense and tension on every page, clock full of nods to classic horror films of the 70s and 80s. Midnight on Beacon Street is a gripping thriller full, full of twists, heartwarming tale of fear. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I am thinking the what the bleep elements are going to be. What? Why is this nine-year-old standing in the kitchen? Like, is he Michael Myers? Like, what? I am so excited for this. I'm a little bit nervous that there's going to be too many twists. Early reviews have not been great, but we're not going to pay attention to those because I'm going to think for myself, a lot of books that I loved in 2023 did not get good reviews like Dead 11, although, you know, some people liked them. Not everyone disliked them, but I am paying less attention to um, negative reviews. Okay, I'm freezing. I'm going to go inside and get started on this book and I'll update you guys soon. But welcome to episode four of season two of what the did I just read?
Good morning, everyone. It is January 1st, 2024, and I wanted to update you guys on this vlog because I am 25% into Midnight on Beacon Street. One thing in my chaotic intro that I forgot to tell you guys is that this is a NetGalley book, so I need to say thank you to HarperCollins for giving me an early copy of this book. The publisher is a subset of, of HarperCollins called Harper uh perennial i'm not sure how to pronounce it but when i looked it up it's a flower so cute anyway i wanted to give you guys an update on this book because i'm 25 percent in and it's new year's day i hope everybody's having a great start to their 2024 in January. So I am really liking this book so far, but I have a lot to say that might help you figure out if you want to buy this book. So 25% in and nothing has happened yet. Like nothing scary, nothing creepy, nothing what the bleep yet. Um, and for some of you all, that might be too slow, um, but I'm really liking it because I'm getting to know the characters. So we have the single mom who is out on a date right now. We have Amy, who is the babysitter and we're going back and forth in time with her. So we're getting to know her as she was growing up and she always had a babysitter growing up and I don't know why that's important yet but it's being shaped as if it's an important part of the story so we're kind of getting to know the current babysitter as a child um, and then we have the two kids that Amy the current babysitter is watching we are laser focused into this house and because we are so laser focused into the house when we're not going back and forth in time um, you kind of have that feeling of like, you know, like the Jaws theme song of da 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 It's like, you know that something scary is about to happen, but like, we're, you know, you know, like in a scary movie when you're so lasered into something that like, you're always trying to look behind the character. That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting. So maybe that is a what the bleep because... I don't think I've experienced that in a book yet. It's just, and nothing scary has happened. Maybe it's just because I'm anticipating something. And I will say something that really freaks me out is house stories. Like when someone gets broken into a house and this book opens the like preface, uh, pre preface of this book is um, that like in 19, the, the year this book takes place. So like 1986 or 19, 96 or something. I think it's 86. It takes place in the 90s, I think. Anyways, um, it's the statistic of how many break-ins happened that year that creeps me out from page one. So actually, this book is scaring me already. And when this book comes out, I want other people to read it because I want to know if this is just a me thing because nothing has happened yet. They've gotten one phone call that there was nobody on the other side of the phone because, duh, we have to do that, right? Um, but yeah, we're just getting to know the characters so far. And also, it is very nostalgic. You can tell it takes place in the 90s because there's a house phone. They order people pizza and the pizza is $9.99 and pizza now is like $18.99 for one pizza. It's ridiculous. And so we definitely know that this is the 90s and just the feel of the babysitting feels very 90s. Like they're dancing, they're playing card games. You know, the kids don't really like the babysitter very much, especially the teenage girl. There is a little boy and he's really cute. I really like him and he really likes the babysitter. Like he wants to impress her. Um, yeah, so we're getting to know the kids and the characters so far. Nothing with the bleep too much yet, except for like, it is pretty unsettling. The babysitter also babysits for the whole neighborhood. And so we're getting these little snippets of what people are like in the neighborhood. And, and like, there's a creepy teacher, creepy high school teacher. So because I know where this is going, because it, it opens with that premise of the nine-year-old standing in the in the kitchen in a pool of blood with a knife, I know that someone's going to die. And so every time something's mentioned, I think that's also what's making me feel so lasered into the story is that I know that something's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen yet. I don't know who's going to die. Because of the way this nine-year-old is being set up, I have a hard time believing that he's going to murder anyone. Maybe he just picked up the knife after something happened. I don't know. But... I am looking forward to finding out this book when I'm not reading it. I want to be reading it. So, so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. I don't really have a star rating prediction yet. I think in my notebook, I maybe put a three star just because early reviews are not great, but I'm already seeing that I think my review of this is going to be different, which is reason number 987 why you shouldn't pay attention to reviews. Okay. I'm going to update you guys later. Um, yeah, so far so good. I can't wait to see where this goes and how creepy it's gonna get because somehow it's already really creeping me out. Hi friends. So it's been a long time since I've done a video clip in my car, but I really wanted to get this video out to you guys ASAP because I have an update for you. I have finished Midnight on Beacon Street and this is a new favorite list book. So it's, I'm making a list now of like my all-time favorite books that are beyond five stars. This is one of them and I'll explain. 
I wanted to check in with you guys before I reached the end, but I forgot I have this nice little holder thing. Yes, I'm a Burger King, don't judge me. Um, that's not gonna work. Okay, anyways, um, everyone wants Burger King in their background though, do they? Oh, oh well, I'm a Burger King guy, you're gonna get Burger King in your background. Anyways, I finished this book, um, and not just a five star, but in like added to my all time favorite list. And not everyone is gonna feel that way. In fact, on Goodreads, this has like a 3.3 .3 rating, which deeply is just incorrect. More people than that are gonna like it. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know where to start because this book hit me on such a deeply personal level that it's impossible to explain. Um, I did reach out to the author. I emailed her and was, and I told her like how much this book meant to me. And she actually emailed me back and was very generous and very kind. Um, so yeah, I am just feeling really seen and really heard, which might sound wild from a horror novel, but okay, essentially, I don't even know what to say. Like, I just don't even know what to say because I loved this book so much and it was just such a personal experience for me. And I don't really want to go into detail about my life, but there have been things that have happened in my life that have made it very hard for me to enjoy or watch horror. And this book is a love letter to people who love horror but might be afraid at times. And sometimes people made fun of me for that or didn't understand why I couldn't just get over it and like the things that would happen in my brain and happen afterwards. I'm not going to go into all that, but this book is a love letter to anxiety, fear, PTSD, OCD. The mental health representation in it is perfect. It is perfect. At least for me, it felt perfect. To be so scared of something, but to want to understand it or to want to be brave and how hard that can be. The what the bleep element in this was just that I connected with it in a way that I don't think I've ever connected with a book. I mean, I read Starling House recently and I loved that book for similar reasons. But this just tapped into a personal trait of mine that I have not been able to have the words to explain to other people. And to read that in a novel, I just have never in my life experienced something like that, which I've never reached out to an author in an email either. And I was like, hey, I hope this is okay, but like, I just want you to know, because in an age of reviewing, when opinions are out there, as they should be, good or bad, I'm not against that, I do it myself all the time. But I think authors should know when their books move people because we often don't hear those things. And so, yeah, I was glad that she read it and, you know, was happy to hear that because I think it's really important. And auto by author, I'll read everything this author puts out no matter what. Her writing just really, really speaks to me. As far as other what the bleep elements, I mean, the whole time this book starts with a kid standing in a kitchen with a knife and blood. And yeah, it is a love letter to horror movies. In particular, another thing is the movie that scared me the most growing up for particular reasons was Halloween with Michael Myers in it. The scene that this author writes about over and over in the book from the Halloween movies, she mentions it many times. Um, I'll put the scene on here if I can somehow quickly, but she mentions that scene like motivating her and scaring her. And I was like, how did you know that that one scene in a movie was the one scene that sticks with me the most? I just, I am shook. Like, I'm just really grateful for this experience. And I hope that everyone can experience these things with books. This is why I do this. This is why I read so many books. And there are other books that have touched me. Gallant, Starling House. But we only find them like once a year if we're lucky. And yeah, this is just a great way to start off 24. Especially because I DNF'd another book this morning that I was reading. I don't know. I, I love this book. And I hope that you all will read it. And it's not going to touch you the same way. Because... You just haven't had the same lived experience as me, but I hope that it touches you even in a different way or you find it fun or enjoy it. It's very good. I just, I loved it so much. If I could buy everyone a copy of this book, I would. I went and pre-ordered my own copy on Amazon because I want to support the author. And yeah, I don't know. I just, just please give it a try. Like, please give it a try. And if you don't like it, I can hear that. That's fine. That's fine with me. I don't expect everyone to have the same experiences with the book that I did, but I just have never... Like until this last year, I couldn't read or watch any horror. And this author put all that on the page for me in a way that I haven't even been able to explain to Casey, like my wife. I mean, she understands she gets it because she knows the things that, that I've been through. Um, just wow. I'm just, the what the bleep is like this experience. I didn't think this experience was going to happen to me. And I'm so glad that it did. Okay, enough about this, I guess. I just, please read the book. It's really good. Don't pay attention to reviews. 
like the book that I DNF today on Goodreads has a 4.14. So every book isn't for everyone. Like that goes for this too. Like this might not be for you, but maybe get it from the library and give it a try. I just, I loved it so much. Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to go eat shitty Burger King because why not? All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. A very special thank you to the Mostly Ghosted crew for supporting my channel every month through the channel membership. And a very special thank you to you for watching this video. I'm sorry it started outside and then you got some of me by my bookshelf and now you're getting me outside in a Burger King parking lot. But this is life. This is a slice of my life. And I couldn't wait any longer to tell you guys about how much I loved this book. Please just go read it. Okay. I'm going to go eat. Bye. Here we go again, you think by now I know better Locked in my head, romanticizing forever